Hey golf people, on today's episode, we are gonna cover the best launch monitors of 2021. We're gonna take a look at all the best contenders in the 600 or less budget range today, and we are going to break down what I like, what I dislike, what I wish I had, and a whole lot more. The contenders today are going to be the Garmin R10, the Flightscope Mevo, the Rapsodo, the Swing Caddy SC300i, the Ernest Sports ESB1, and the Garmin G80, which is sort of a dark horse in this category, but it has some pretty interesting features which you need to know about. So those are the six that I'm including. I think they are the best options currently on the market. Sure, there are others, but the ones we're gonna cover today really are tools, things that you can practice with, get better with, and learn your distances, and ultimately become the best golfer that you can be. So in today's comparison, here are the categories that I'll be covering. Number one, ease of use, and this gets into setup as well as the intuitiveness of the app. How easy are these devices to get going? Category number two is going to be data. Which data points do these devices track for you? Category number three will be data visualizations and their usefulness. So once this data is compiled, how easy is it to use, to navigate, to actually help you learn and get better and improve at the game of golf? Category number four is a simple one, but for many of you, it will be the most important one, and that is accuracy. How accurate is the data coming out of these devices? Category five is one that not a lot of people cover, but I think is really important, and that is durability. How will these devices stand the test of time, and how will they hold up going in and out of your golf bag, moving from your home to the driving range, being out in the sun and the rain and the wind and all that good stuff. Category six will be portability. Some of these devices are small and easy to maneuver. Some are not so much. They're a little bit bigger and bulkier. They won't necessarily fit in a golf bag very easily. So we'll discuss that. Category number seven will be battery life. How long will these devices last? You don't wanna to have to be charging these things all the time and you certainly don't want to be out on the range just about to start your session and the thing dies. That's the worst, so we'll cover that. And lastly, we'll go into some extra features that each of these devices have that really make them stand out from the rest, as well as the drawbacks and anything that you should be concerned with with these devices. I will be scoring all of these categories at the end. We will put those numbers together and we will crown a winner in the best launch monitor category. Now, before we get into the first category, I really want to thank our sponsor playbetter.com who helped provide all of the equipment that I tested this year. All the golf technology that you see on the show comes from playbetter.com and I highly recommend you shop there too. Playbetter.com always has the best prices when it comes to golf technology. They're great people and they really care about golfers out there. They've got a 60 day no hassle return policy so if there's anything that you buy from them that you don't absolutely love in that 60 days, they'll take it back. They offer free two day shipping in the continental United States. And as I always say, they're just wonderful folks who really care. So I will leave links to all of these devices down below so you can buy them at playbetter.com. If you are international, I'll also put some Amazon links down below. When you hit those links, you help support this show. But thank you, playbetter.com. So first things first, let's start with setup and ease of use. When you get one of these devices, you wanna rip it open out of the box and you wanna take it out and have some fun and you don't want anything to hold you back from that experience. Now with some of these, I've had really good experiences and I've had times where I actually wanted to pull my hair out this year trying to get these things set up. But in order of best to worst, we'll start here with the Garmin G80. The Garmin G80 is a device that requires absolutely no app, so you don't have to use your mobile device in any way. You literally fire this thing up, you place it about eight to 10 inches from the ball, just to the right of your ball if you're right-handed, or to the left of your ball if you're left-handed, and you can start taking swings and getting results. So for ease of use, Garmin is going to get the full five points here. Now our runner up here is actually two different devices that I find to be equally as easy to set up. They were literally as simple as registering for the app and starting up the device, connecting to Bluetooth, and I was good to go. That is the R10 from Garmin, as well as the Flightscope Mevo. Both of these I got set up in less than a minute or two once I was registered for the app 
and I really like the user experience on the apps themselves. Next up is the Rap Soto. The Rap Soto takes a little bit more setup, not much. The app is very easy to sign up and get started with, but you'll have to plug your phone in because the phone is an integral part of this unit. Still very easy to set up, but because it requires the phone, we're gonna go ahead and give it two points here. Next up is going to be the Ernest Sports ESB1. The app was just a little bit finicky. One nice thing about it was you don't necessarily have to register and create a username for this. You could just get going. But oftentimes if you restart the app or close it and shut it down, like I was checking my text messages and emails and things and I'd go back, I wasn't sure if I was connected and if I was still in that same session. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it one point here. And in last place for this particular category is going to be the Swing Caddy SC300i. I was literally pulling my hair out. If you watched that video, it took me a couple hours early in the morning to get this thing up and running. I had all sorts of problems with registering a username and then getting on the network with this device. So that's going to get zero points in this category. But don't worry, Swing Caddy gets better as we go. Uh, just in this category, it was my least favorite. So the next category here is data points. What are the data points these devices measure? The Garmin R10 is going to give you the most robust stats and data points here. You're gonna have club face and club path data. Some of that is calculated because like all of these units, it's a Doppler device and it can't directly measure things like spin, so it has to calculate it off other data points it does directly measure. But all in all, I find it to be really useful. The club path data, as we've talked about in some of the Garmin R10 videos, as well as the shot shape, for me, seem to be very accurate. We're gonna get into accuracy more specifically in the next category, but the fact that it even attempts to measure these data points, to me, is a huge bonus. Next up is going to be the Rap Soto, because in addition to the standard data points that the rest of these units will also give you, it also gets a little edge from me for having a shot tracer built in. So literally after you take a swing, it builds a shot trace, which is just super cool. And I believe it's the only device in this category that will do it. That technology is awesome. So it's gonna get four points from me. The Rapsodo is gonna measure ball speed, launch angle, launch direction, club head speed, carry distance, total distance, smash factor, and apex height. The Flight Scope Mevo will give you carry distance, club head speed, ball speed, smash factor, vertical launch angle, spin rate, apex height, and flight time. Swing Caddy is going to be next. With the Swing Caddy, you're gonna get ball speed, launch angle, club head speed, carry distance, total distance, smash factor, and apex height. So we're gonna go ahead and give it two points. The Ernest Sport's not quite as robust as these others. There's a couple data points missing, but it does give you ball speed, club speed, distance, smash factor, spin rate, and launch angle. So one point for the Ernest Sports. And taking up the rear here is going to be the G80 from Garmin, which is going to give you estimated carry and roll. It's gonna give you club head speed, ball speed, smash factor, and they throw in tempo there. I don't believe these other ones do that. But that is nice for swing training, but for you stat nerds, probably the least important out there. But all that data is great, but how it's compiled and visualized and how useful it is, is a whole nother story. So that's the next category here. For data visualizations and usefulness, I'm gonna go ahead and give the Rap Soto the top spot here and the full five points. The interface is an absolute pleasure to use. You've got a great map overview of where all of your shots have landed out on the practice range. You've got the data points and all of your stats there, which is very easy to compile. And it just looks great. As a former graphic designer myself, I can appreciate good design and there's great design in the Rap Soto. Second in this category, getting four points is going to be the Mevo. I love how the data is visualized on screen and the different options you have during sessions and then post sessions, the way it averages data and compiles that and helps you save it and see if you're improving or not, it just does a fantastic job with that as well. Getting the third spot here in three points is going to be the Garmin R10. So for me, the R10 drawbacks are it's a little bit more difficult to navigate the screens, especially since the current app is vertical or portrait mode only. There's no horizontal view. So a lot of times the data gets cut off and you've got to scroll to see 
other points. It also does for me kind of a poor job in terms of compiling the data and seeing how I'm improving or <laughs> if my game is declining over time. Hopefully not doing that, but who knows? <laughs> and the averages are just not as easy to see at a quick glance. So for me, this is going to get the third spot. In fourth place for me is gonna be the Swing Caddy SC300i. I do think that it could use a slightly better app for sure. The app experience is definitely not the best, but it does give you that information on screen, which is really nice. You can just look at it at a glance during the session and see those big numbers. So I do like that, but the app itself definitely could use some work. In fifth place is going to be the ESB1 from Ernest Sports. The visualizations on the app are pretty, in my opinion, poor. Uh, they're not laid out very well. The graphics are not very good. And sometimes they're just like head scratching in terms of if they're even useful or not, especially when it comes to actually seeing where your ball landed on the range in real time. And it's just very strange. It comes out of the corner, which to me is bizarre. To make a long story short, I don't love it. I think this app could be improved, but it's definitely a step up from our last place finisher here, the Garmin G80, which really doesn't have a dedicated app for it. And there's not a real way to compile that data over time. There's really no way to actually input your clubs and track what you're hitting. It's just what you see is what you get on screen. Our next category here is arguably the most important. It's the reason you buy these devices in the first place, and that is accuracy. I think the best system in terms of accuracy is going to be the Swing Caddy SC300i. I found it to be extremely accurate throughout my bag from driver all the way down to wedge. I verified the readings I was seeing on the range with my rangefinder when I was close enough to a flag. I think the SC300 does a really, really good job. Holding up the number two position is going to be a tie here between the Garmin R10 and the Mevo. Both do a really good job getting it right most of the time. And again, I think both of these units do well with wedges, which sometimes that holds these units back. They don't read wedges as well or they don't read really fast swing speeds, but from my experience, both of those did very well out on the range. Third place in this category is going to go to the ESB-1. I don't think it was quite as good as the Mevo or the Garmin R10, but it did a pretty good job and enough so that I would trust the numbers coming out of this device for the most part. In fourth place for me is going to be the Rapsodo. For me, it seemed to consistently underreport the data, especially with wedge shots, I would say. I wasn't necessarily getting accurate distances there, but I've got to mention that a lot of people think that the Rapsodo is really accurate. So I can only go off my own personal experience. For me, it was fourth in this category. Now, lastly, we've got the G80. The G80 sometimes is really, really good, and sometimes it's just not as good. I probably should have mentioned this in the data category, but with the G80, you're not gonna know if that ball went left or right, like you will with all these other devices either. It's only going to give you the distance. So if you really push one right, or you really yank one left, I think it has trouble reading those shots specifically. The next category here is going to be durability. How well will these units stand the test of time? For the most part, these units do very well in terms of build quality with a couple of notable exceptions. So I have a four-way tie for my first place vote. We're gonna give it to the R10, the Swing Caddy, the Mevo, and the G80. Those will all get two points. The materials used and the construction is very solid. The Rapsodo is going to come in beneath those because I had real problems with this device out in the sun because you have to have your phone on this device and it kept shutting down for me. I'm in Florida in a very hot, humid environment, and I just couldn't get this device to keep working for me. So in terms of durability, I've got to ding it here and give it only one point. In last place here is going to be the ESB-1. The build quality of this to me seems a lot cheaper than the rest of the competition. It's almost kind of a little hollow here. The plastic feels cheap. Even the hinge here, just doesn't seem to be really solid to me. I'm going to give this my last spot. Now the next category for me is really important because I'm on the move, I do a lot of traveling, and that is portability. The winner for portability for me in this category is going to be the G80 
as well as the Mevo. Both of these are tiny, as you can see, very low profile. The Mevo actually comes with a little sack, which I think is a bonus as well. I don't think the G80 came with anything that I can remember. Either way, I just kind of throw it in my bag and I've never had a problem with it other than a couple scratches on the screen. But uh, it is nice to have this little carry case. You know, I love that you just set it up. There's no second piece, it just flips out. <laughs> and you got this thing to stand up behind you. It's just super easy to just take out of my bag, put it in my bag and get set up out on the range. Number two in this category for me is going to be the Garmin R10. It's going to be a little bit bigger than those two devices, especially when it is inside of this case. It's a beautiful case though. Um, kind of a soft shell case. There's great padding and foam inside there. And it seems like it will protect the device very, very well. And it just slides into that bottom center pocket, the big pocket on my golf bag. It does fit there. So it's nice that I can take this in and out of my bag, set it down on the range, bring it back home, have an indoor session or a backyard session, and then put it back in my golf bag as well. So number two is going to be the Garmin R10 here. In third place is going to be the wrap soto it, it is nice that it does fold down it actually comes with again on like a nice case kind of similar to what you'd get with a rangefinder so that's really nice the swing caddy is going to get my fourth place vote and that's really just because it's much bigger than the rest of these devices i think that does help it be more accurate because the doppler technology and what's built inside of here is a little bit bigger too but it is just not quite as portable now if you are going to get a swing caddy highly recommend again you get it at play better because they'll give you this nice case to go along with it, it fits it perfectly, and it serves the second purpose of really being basically at mat height because all of these units need to sit at mat height. Uh, so getting this case from Play Better in their bundle is highly recommended, but because it's a so big and a little bit more bulky, just not quite as portable. Last but not least is the biggest device of them all. That's the Ernest Sports ESB-1. On top of that, it comes in a very flimsy kind of leatherette feel uh, sack. So again, a big bulky device that's maybe not quite as durable and the protection that it comes with is not all that impressive either. So for this reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in last place. The next category here is going to be battery life. How long will these things last without you having to recharge? To me, that's really important because again, I don't wanna be out having a session and have this thing shut off on me. In first place with an incredible 20 hours of battery life, probably due to its larger size is going to be the ESB1. So that's gonna get my top spot in the full five points here. Number two in this category is gonna be the G80. This thing has a claimed battery life of 15 hours and I think it actually goes longer than that. I use this as a GPS device out on course a lot. In a lot of my videos where I am getting basic shot data as well as measuring shots and all the other things that this device can do, it's also a GPS. When you're using GPS, I think that does cut down the battery a little bit, but I get four or five rounds out of this thing easy. But 15 stated hours is going to get the second spot here for battery life. In third place, getting three points is going to be the Swing Caddy. The Swing Caddy has a battery life of 12 hours, which is really good. You're gonna get multiple sessions out of that one. In fourth place is going to be the Garmin R10. You will get 10 hours of battery life out of the R10 as stated by Garmin. I found that to be pretty accurate as well, both indoor and outdoor. I think when you're outdoor with all these devices, especially if it's hot, that's going to suck a little bit of your battery. In fifth place is going to be the Rap Soto. The Rap Soto will give you eight hours of battery life. So it should be plenty to get a few range sessions out of it, but you will be needing to charge it a little bit more than the rest. And in last place, the Mevo. The Mevo is by far the least amount of battery of all these devices. You're going to get four hours of usage out of the Mevo before you have to recharge it. Again, there's always a trade-off, right? For a unit this small, they just can't put a huge battery inside it. So while it is portable, it just won't last you quite as long. The Mevo gets last place. All right, now it's time for me to tell you about some special features of some of these devices that I think earn it a few extra points. And I'm going to assign a point value to how important I think those extra features are. So the SC300i has a couple of really cool things that go along with it that I think make it worthy of getting a few extra points. First of all, it comes with this remote and the remote actually has all of the clubs on it. You just literally push like seven iron, pitching wedge, whatever the club is, and it's going to 
automatically change that on the unit so you get accurate results. Many times with these devices, I've forgotten to choose which club I'm using and that messes up all of my averages. And this makes it really nice to just be able to point it back at the device and make those changes. In addition, it's got a very decent sized speaker back here. So you get the audible feedback of what the shot data is. Couple that with the big screen. It's just very, very easy to know what happened right after you take the shot. And it happens very quickly once you take the shot as well. And last but certainly not least, in addition to the great Doppler radar that's in this device, it also has a barometric sensor built in. So it's going to give you some environmental data, which is going to play into your averages to give you even more accurate results. So for all of those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and give three additional points to the SC300i. The next bonus I'm gonna hand out is for the Rap Soto. I love the fact that it gives you a shot trace out of the box. And for the most part, I found those shot traces to be fairly accurate. There were a couple anomalies surely, but it did really well. And to do that in real time is super cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the Rapsodo three points for having that feature. The next bonus I hand out is going to be a big one because this Garmin R10 does something that none of these other devices do, and that's have a full golf simulator built into it. It comes with access to over 42,000 courses that Garmin has mapped for a very small monthly fee, and it also lets you hook up to things like E6, where you can have a full golf simulator built into your home or in your backyard. For that reason, I'm gonna give the Garmin R10 a five point bonus because that feature is incredible and it's really what sets it apart for me in this category. The Garmin G80 is going to get an extra point from me because it has some cool features that I really appreciate. First of all, not only is it a little launch monitor, but it's also a GPS device out on course. So if you don't wanna wear a watch or you don't wanna have a rangefinder, you can literally get distances from this device, which is super cool. I love that it measures your shots. I use that all the time because I can see how far my drives go when I'm comparing drivers and that sort of thing. It's also got some games built in and some other interesting features. You can check out my full review for all it can do, but I'm gonna give it an extra point here because it does some awesome stuff. And lastly here, I'm going to give an additional couple of points to the ESB1, to the Swing Caddy, and to the G80 because all of these devices allow you to get an instant readout of your shot data without having to refer back to your phone. So if you have your phone set up behind you, maybe it's recording the shots and some of that other information, you won't be able to actually tell other than audibly how far you hit these. With these, you can just literally look over at the screen. The SC300i being the best of those because it's the largest of the screens. This screen's a little bit smaller, but it's really nice to just be able to at a glance, get some of that initial shot data data and know what you're doing out there. So I'm gonna give two points to each of these devices. Now we just added all of those points to those devices and there's one device that I'm gonna actually ding a couple of points from. We're gonna take two points away from the Rap Soto for the fact that this is an iPhone only device. That's a huge miss for all the Android users out there, which is half the population or more. For that reason, we're gonna take two points away from the Rap Soto. It would be nice to see them change that. I don't see why they can't build the Android app, but I'm not an engineer either. So <laughs> at any rate, we're gonna take a couple points away for the Rap Soto. All right, it's time to add all of the point values up and actually crown a winner here. We're gonna go from least amount of points to highest amount of points. At the bottom here, the ESB1 is gonna come in with 12 points. In fifth place, the Rap Soto comes in with 17 points. In fourth place, we're gonna give it to the Garmin G80 with 18 points. Just edging that out is the Mevo with 19 points. And next up, we've got our second place winner here. It was really close. It was great for accuracy. It just failed in a couple of other categories or else it would have claimed the top spot. And that's going to be the Swing Caddy SC300i. And the winner, my best overall golf launch monitor under $600 for 2021 
is going to be the Garmin R10 with a big bonus being that simulator built into it. And I'm not the only one. There were a lot of folks here on the channel who agreed with me that the R10 is probably the best of the bunch. Now, I always welcome your comments and opinions. If there are features that you think are more important down below or anything I missed, please do let me know in the comments. If you think I absolutely nailed it, I always love that too. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. I hope you got some value out of this comparison review and I hope it helps you as you decide which one of these golf launch monitors is going to be right for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.